to drop a like on the video subscribe if you're new and of course enable that bell for all notifications so you never miss any of our content of course consider becoming a member of the channel here to help support what we do at the coalition network and as always check us out on patreon where you can get a lot of cool rewards and perks and of course become a member of the performance center here on rush but tonight folks we've got a great car lined up for you jackknife takes on the debuting victor jula of trial by flight will this debut go his way or will jackknife pick up the win here tonight but that is not the only debut we have no 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 we've got another member of trial by flight making his debut as gordon goodman takes on catch 22's the big hurt Brandon Mack, two debuting camp members from Trial by Flight. Will they both be successful? Neither successful. Maybe one and one. We'll have to find out. But tonight, folks, the main event, the Icon King, Juan Montana, takes on Bandy Kirigaya in one of our number one contenders matches for the Rush Championship. Who is going to be one of the two men walking into our next live spectacular for the Red Brand here to compete for the Rush Championship? We're going to find out one of them here tonight in the main event. However, it is time to get us started with the action for our opening contest. And the debut for this man right here, Victor Jewell. The following your open contest set for one fall. Increasing first. Representing the trial by flight, Victor Jola! Jola making his entrance here into Club Rush for the very first time. This man's background, family history, Native American. Fully on display as he wears it with pride. Looking to pick up a win for not only his camp, but himself here tonight. Big athleticism and agility from Victor Jola. Very excited to see this man inside of the squared circle and what he has to offer to the red brand here. But he's gonna have his hands full here tonight with this man. Dagknife has been a huge wild card here on the red brand. This guy, absolutely unpredictable. You never know what you're gonna see out of Jackknife. Well, besides the face, only a mother can love. And his opponent, representing the left-hand path, Jackknife! A very unique individual, to say the least, but an absolutely intimidating presence inside the ring and outside. Jackknife, of course, looking to pick up a win for himself here tonight for his teammates, for his campmates, for the left-hand pad. Everyone out here looking for wins, looking to continue to up their stock here in Rush, especially with the breakout championship now being in play and the Rush championship being introduced at our next live spectacular. A lot on the line for these guys here. And we are off with the bell. Jackknife immediately off. Huge running knee. Knocking Jula into the corner. And this one's starting off with a bang. No lockups. This both men trading strikes in the corner here. 
Nothing classic about this one besides some hard-hitting offense and Jola with some big kicks. In a stunning day's jackknife for a minute off the road, looking for something big and a nice meteor into the corner. Dula very athletic and agile as we've seen. Let's bring it up to that top row, the jackknife up immediately, but Jula diving out of the way off of the ropes. He is off with a huge head of steam in the start of this one. And a big senton to the back of Jackknife as he tries to roll away straight into the cover, shoulders to the mat, but only one. This one started off fast. Jula looking to look for a springboard back elbow though. Jackknife moving out of the way. And now looking for that tequila sunrise. We've seen this a lot from Jackknife. Trying to ground Jula right off of the bat here. Probably a smart strategy with someone that seems to be as fast as, as Victor out of the gates. This guy's been full on speed and athleticism. Look at this. Nice roll up there. Small package. Shoulders down. Only two. Jackknife springing right back up. Rolling through. Oh, big sidekick to the head right there into the cover only one fast paced action to kick us off here tonight on rush Jula reversing the Irish whip pulling it back in nice hurricane Rana and the speed and athleticism of this guy off the charts springboard from the top Ooh, missed what he was going for there Jack and I've had him scouted looking to get the match back up in his favor oh Jula reversing pulling him down backslide Jackknife trying to reach the ropes with his feet, but can't do so, but breaks out at two. Oh, big sidekick from Jackknife. And now off of the rope, oh, but no. Not connecting with that forearm. Jula trying to fire some shots back. But Jackknife, not sure if he wants to slug with him. We've seen in Jackknife's matches before. He is very in-depth at striking. Being a part of that full left-hand path camp. Just decking Jula with a forearm right there. Victor trying to recover. Jackknife taunting his capacity crowd. It's not a club rush. Oh, a headbutt in the back of the head, and Jula just falls off the apron. Vicious, unpredictable offense from Jackknife, as always. And now using the outside to his advantage here. Jula, well, not to let it happen, though. Bringing some blows with him out here, but. The official Maria Green Jenkins trying to get both men back inside the ring to no avail and just throwing Jula into the barricade and Jackknife continuing this assault on the outside. Referee up to a four count now and Jackknife just planting elbows right in the ribs of Victor Jula on the outside here at a six count. Jackknife doesn't look to be letting up at all. Continuing this assault on the outside, now looking to maybe suplex him on the barricade, and he does! Jackknife back in the ring. We're at an eight count. Jackknife not breaking the count, not going back out. Jewel is going to have to get up. There's a nine. Oh, and he does! Just in time, sliding back in the ring. Jackknife not wasting any time, but he gets planted with a face buster. Straight into the cover, shoulders to the mat, but only two. Oh, and Jackknife pulling him into the small package there. Playing coy for just a second. Not enough. Both of these guys extremely back and forth. Oh, maybe look at, oh, thought he was looking for another tequila sunrise there, but Jackknife now maybe looking to work the arm of Jula. Ooh, slippery. He's bringing out of that, looking for something here. Look at this. Octopus stretch, I believe, applied. That knife gonna have to try to power his way out. No, technically sound for the drop toe hold, making his way out of that one. Ooh, but for that knee, he hit at the beginning of the match. But no, springboard drop kick from Jula out of nowhere, taking him down. And it doesn't look like Jula's done yet. Off the ropes, looking for something. Oh, but no, missing. Giving Jack not the advantage here. Trying to get back in this thing. Torture rack with a neck breaker. Straight into the cover, moving Jula out of the way of the ropes. Could this be it? Shoulders to the mat. Two. No, oh, no. Jula staying alive and Jackknife not giving him a moment's break. To try to recover here. Jackknife going to the top rope. High rent district. Big elbow drop and he missed. 
Joel going to be looking to capitalize into the other turnbuckle. European uppercut. Back elbow, throwing him down. Oh, look at this. Nice little Hail Mary there. Courtesy of Coach Cody from Trial by Point. Now it's Springboard DDT. Man, this Victor Jula kid is all over the place. Into the cover. Leg hook. And still not enough to put Jackknife away. This match has been 100 miles an hour since go. Will in the corner looking for something. Springboarding off the ropes. Looking for that springboard drop kick but missed. Jackknife though. Off of the ropes. Looking for a springboard of his own but missed. He was striking back now. A little bit of a flurry from Drew but Jackknife with a flurry of his own. Like I said, I don't think you want to trade blows with him. Slamming him down into the mat and into the cover. Jula getting the shoulder up, still in this one. And Jack not trying to argue with the official. What an opening contest for us so far here tonight. Jackknife looking to put Victor in that trio low position and now just stomping at him. What the hell is he looking for here? Jula trying to get up out of that trio low position, but Jackknife throws it, stomping him right in the chest from that trio low position. That can easily do it. But Victor Jula stays in it. He's got to recover, though. Jackknife arguing with the official that that was three. Just throwing Jula back in the ring. Jackknife, like I said, very vicious. Unrelenting in his offense. He hardly gives his opponent a moment's notice to recover, but he could have there and it could have cost him. Rolled up. Open now. Listen, the nick of time getting out. Now firing off some shots. Clothesline, back forearm. Oh, but no, Jackknife had him scouted and continuing to rain down these vicious strikes. But Jula slamming him to the mat and quickly into a dragon sleeper. Center of the ring. Jackknife's got nowhere to go and it is stitched in. But Jackknife trying to fight out. Rolling through, getting out. Ooh, a shot right to the back. These guys have been absolutely all over each other in this match. And another one of those tequila sunrises this time. Jackknife might have it in a little deeper. But no. The athleticism of Jula once again rotating out. And drops Jackknife with a little clothesline there. And now going to the top. And the world is Jula looking for off the top. Big leg drop away from up top two and the no. hole jackknife staying in it jula seems to have something planned here lining him up again in the corner but jackknife's trying to recover jula doesn't see him turning around oh but no just moves right out of the way and misses that elbow drop Jula did not have enough time to see Jackknife going up before he got set, and he might have costed him there. Big half and half suplex from Jackknife, dropping Jula right on his head, but Jula's still staying in it. Jackknife's starting to get a little frustrated now. What is it going to take to keep this guy down? Once again, arguing with the official, Maria Green Jenkins. Jackknife just kicking Jula right in the head knee taking him off his feet Jula trying to recover crawling into that turnbuckle that might not be where he wants to go though oh wait a minute Jackknife from the top with a Spanish fly into the cover how much more punishment can Jula take even more still kicking out here the heart of an absolute warrior from Victor Jula he has taken everything Jackknife has thrown his way and answered back. And how much does he have left in the tank and a big right hand from Jackknife. Laying Victor Jula back down and now with a springboard senton. Following up shot there and a running headbutt. The combinations from Jackknife, absolutely. Just the best way I can describe it, random. It's just chaotic. 
Nula once again going back to that turnbuckle trying to recover pulling himself up on the ropes but Jackknife Looking for something big here. Looking to go high risk over the top. Oh, and Jola moves right out of the way. And Jackknife eats nothing but the floor. They don't call it high risk, high reward for nothing. Jola looking for something, though. Stalking Jackknife off the ropes. Big Hurricane Rana. And the athleticism followed up with it. And he's not done yet. Jola coming in hot. Oh, missing a strike there. Jackknife trying to slow this pace back down. It's what this entire matchup has been about. The quickness of Victor Jula and the unrelenting assault from Jackknife now on the top. Big diving headbutt connects straight into the cover. Will that do it? Leg is hooked, shoulders are down, and no! Jula continues to fight, continues to stay alive here. Jackknife has got to be thinking, what the hell do I got to do? to keep this guy down for the three count. Lula continuing to fight back into the turnbuckle. That knife moving out of the way of the drop kick and continuing to follow up suit. Continuing this relentless assault. And Jula continuing to fight, continuing to try to pull himself up with the ropes with the turnbuckle, doing anything he can to buy time to recover, to build some more momentum. Look at only the turnbuckle coming in though. Jackknife eats the turnbuckle in a roundhouse kick for his troubles. Joel, I think, looking for that DDT again, and this time Jackknife runs straight into it. He runs straight into it, and Joel is not done yet. Turning him around, lining him up, springing up to the top, and a moonsault! A picture perfect moonsault from Joel. That's gotta be it. Shoulders down, leg is hooked. No, Jackknife kicks out. How the hell did Jackknife get out of that one? But he might not even know where the hell he's at right now. Pulling himself up on the turnbuckle. But he might have just put himself right into the sights. Oh man, off the top row. Big back superplex from Victor Jula. And that had to have taken a little bit out of him as well. But he's feeding off the energy of this crowded club rush. They are fully behind Victor Jula. Shot to the gut. Big spinning neck breaker. Is that enough to keep Jackknife down? It is. A well hard fought debut victory for Victor Jula. Here is your winner by pitfall, Victor Jula. What a opening contest between these guys. We saw everything but the kitchen sink, but folks, you're gonna see a commercial break. We'll be right back with more Rush. Congrats to Victor Jola. What's up, everyone? Thank you for tuning into another episode of SWW. We just wanna take a quick second to talk to you guys about our Patreon. As we continue to try to take the show and the channel more full-time and produce even more content on a more regular basis, we need your help. Thus, a couple of months ago, we launched our Patreon, offering all kinds of cool rewards and perks, even at the standard tier for the low, low cost of just five bucks a month. With that, you're gonna be supporting the channel directly. You'll get sneak peeks at upcoming episodes, exclusive Discord perks and access, your name in the credits of every episode in Live Spectacular, and a call resource pack included with face textures, logos, tattoos, and more to help improve your call. Now our breakout tier is gonna get you more perks as well as the previously listed ones like 20% off merch at SWWshop.com, early access to some Adrenaline and Blitz episodes before they're on YouTube, and of course, access to the brand new SWW Performance Center, which is gonna be getting you on the show, on the channel here on Rush. For all information and everything regarding not only just the Performance Center, but all of our other rewards and perks, Head on over to our Patreon and check it out and consider helping further the expansion of SWW even further because without you guys, none of this is possible. So thank you all for tuning in once again. Without further ado, let's get back to the action. 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome this back to Rush. Oh, wait a minute. What the hell is that? It's, it's the coach. The coach of Catch 22, Trey Mercer, making his way down here to Club Rush. Honestly, I don't know what the hell this could even be about. But it's got to be something a little important for Trey Mercer to make his way out here. Nonetheless, seems like we're going to be hearing from the coach here tonight. And as you can hear by the reception, the fans here at Club Rush certainly don't have an issue with that at all. Man, oh man, what is in store for this man right here as we approach season two of SWW? I cannot wait to see, but let's see what he's got to say here tonight. AO Club Rush, how are y'all living? Is it's time to huddle up. Now, in case you missed what happened on SWW Rush SummerSlam, boy, you done missed a good one, folks. I've been in this game a long time now, y'all. Long enough to know when you love us and when you hate us. And on August 3rd, I know something, something here was connecting with you people. And seeing the love that you gave all these kids in the back, Man, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for giving these knuckleheads a chance to show you what they really could do. They give us a reason to keep fighting for the future of professional wrestling, no matter who it is, no matter where you come from, or where you've been, or what you've been through. You have a home here. And in this house, anything is possible, y'all, especially when there's gold on the line. And in the opening match of SWW Rush SummerSlam, we saw an inauguration. We saw a pipe dream worth every bit of the smoke. We saw the impossible become possible, but only if you believe. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, allow me to introduce to you, representing Catch 22, he is the first ever SWW Rush breakout champion, Florida man, Ricky Carson. Florida man Ricky Carson, come on down, kid. The inaugural breakout champion himself, eliminating seven other men at Rush SummerSlam to claim the title as the first ever Rush breakout champion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your first ever Rush breakout champion. I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty excited we get to hear from the Florida man. The professional amateur Gator Wrangler himself, and now champion. What a great speech there from the coach. But let's hear from our man, our champ, our breakout champion. The Florida man, Ricky Carson. Well, hey to y'all too. I appreciate the fanfare, Coach, man, but you didn't have to do any of that, really. But hey, man, like you said, first ever Rush champion. I mean, I can't believe I'm standing here holding this. Really, it's been a couple of weeks, but it's still hard to take in. And it's all thanks to you, Coach, man, really. I, I don't know how I'm ever going to be able to repay you for everything you've done for me to get to this point. No need, player. This one ain't about me. It's all yours. I'm just glad I get to say that Catch-22 was the first camp to win gold and the one that gets to bring it right back to the gridiron. I always knew it was going to be someone from the home team, but the fact that it's you, but that's enough out of me. Florida, man. The floor is yours, champ. Oh, coach, man. Well, I think y'all and the S-Dubs faithful deserve some credit, too. I, I mean, I wouldn't have been able to get anywhere near this far if it wasn't for y'all's love and support. Uh, ever since I was a little kiddo, they called me Florida boy back then, I knew I always had a special calling on my life. At the time, I just thought it was rolling in the mode with gators, but now, 
Now this is where I belong. SWW has become my new Florida, and y'all are now officially honorary Floridians. The fans here in Club Rush, chain in Florida. We're all Floridians now, baby. Wait, what the? What is this? A Sebastian Saint. Fellow Catch 22 camp mate. A Florida man. What the hell is he doing out here? To spoil the party. And these fans here at Club Rush, not having it one bit. You better have a damn good explanation. Why is he out here to try to steal Florida man's moment? All right, that's enough. We get it. It's the boyhood dream come true. Hooray. You know, you gotta be kidding me with all this. This walking NASCAR ad shtick. I'm just waiting on the guy to say shake and bake. Sebastian Saint isn't here to listen to this hillbilly Hallmark act anymore. Sebastian, what you doing, play? This is not the time to be doing this. Oh, it isn't? Huh, coach? Don't have time to talk to the best student you got in your whole damn camp? Of course you don't. Instead, you'd rather spend it hyping up the Duck Dynasty charity case by giving him handouts he doesn't deserve and patting him on the back for fluke after fluke along the way. Hey, you listen here, Mr. Taint. It's Saint. The grapple god, Sebastian Saint. Tomato potato, amigo. Look, I ain't trying to cause no tension between us campmates. I mean, we're, we're both out here repping the green team. I went for a Florida man and I went for all of Cash 22. Ain't no need to be fighting over who's better. <laughs> oh, shit. That's, that's funny. You think you're better than me? <laughs> Dude, you don't even dress better than me. My glove cost more than your whole outfit. Let me guess, you got that shirt in the clearance rack at Walmart, huh? No, it was Target. I'm making breakout champion money now. See, that's your problem, Florida man. You're nothing but a joke. There are people with actual talent here, but you? You're here to entertain while I'm here for championships. And the fact that you're holding that before me is an embarrassment to our camp. You know if I was in that match, I would have threw your fat ass out first just so I didn't have to carry the dead weight with me and still walked out with the championship. It's time you stop letting coach protect you and for you to let a real wrestler represent Catch-22 properly. Put that championship up so I can put it around the waist of a real grappler and send you back to the bayou. All right, that, that, that's it. I'm done with, listen here. You are not supposed to talk to your teammate no, no, like- No, 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 no. You know what, Sebastian? Last time I checked, this joke lasted long enough with seven other failures in the ring to walk out with a goddamn belt around his belly. So whether or not you think I deserve to be in that match doesn't matter. Cause I got the proof right here. And I'm gonna prove it once again, once I beat your behind like your mama should have done to you a long time ago. Cause you know what? You're on, Saint. <laughs> Good. See you next week, champ. Ladies and gentlemen, we got our first title defense next week on Rush. Florida man accepting the challenge after the pure disrespect by Sebastian Saint. That's not only disrespecting Florida, man. That's, to me, that's disrespecting your coach, too. Coming out here, like a moment after that, Trey Mercer having to hold Ricky back there for a sec. But wow, what an announcement. Breakout championship. Next week, Sebastian Saint and Florida, man, one on one. But Let's get back to the action, ladies and gentlemen. We've got another debut here tonight for Trial by Flight. This man, Gordon Goodman. Your next contest is set for one ball. Introducing first, representing Trial by Flight, Gordon Goodman. Now, the only background information I have on Gordon Goodman is apparently he's a life coach. 
obviously he's got a little bit of sponsors um, looking at his gear, so he must be sort of successful in that room. But nonetheless, will he be successful here in the ring tonight in his debut matchup, making it a two for two for trial by flight. Victor Jula victorious in his debut in our first matchup of the night. Not going to lie, this guy looks like he might have a little bit of an ego, but we'll see how that fares for him against this man, the big heart, Brandon Mack. And his opponent, representing Catch-22, the big heart, Brandon Mack. Mack looking for his first win here on the red brand. You got to think with tensions heating up, all over Rush now with our new management here under Jebediah Bell's brother, Barnabas Bell. I'm going to call him Barney. I'm going to call him Barnabas. I'm sorry. It's too, too long a name. I'm, I'm not about it. We've got a whole new management here on Rush. He has laid the law down. We're going to be seeing more camp mates go against each other now, which I think is, is fine in most aspects, as long as it's respectful competition. But what we just saw moments ago with Sebastian saying that was nothing but pure disrespect, like I said, towards Florida man and his coach. But let's shift gears. Bell is rung. We are underway. Debut matchup for Gordon Goodman here against the Big Heart brand and Mac. Both men circling each other. Big right hand from the Big Hurt. A little bit of jaw jacking between these two and Goodman. Out of the ring and on the run. Brandon Mack giving up suit. Coming back at him. Oh, and going low. Big chop block by Gordon Goodman. And maybe he baited Mack in. Playing a little bit of cat and mouse there. But Mack now raining down the hands. And look at the strength of the big hurt himself big time power from brandon mack look at this looking to show it on display even more just chucking goodman across the ring oh we got goodman in the turnbuckle but no running right into the boots and a big clothesline from goodman coming back up tripping him up going for a roll up here shoulders down oh but now reversing it beautifully done by mack two Oh, but look at that. Gordon shifting the weight back in his favor. Oh, but just one there. Gordon coming back in hot. Going for the legs. Sometimes it's what you got to do against the bigger man. Chop down the redwood, but it doesn't look like it's going to be too effective on Mac. He's just going to slug his way out of that one. A big STO taking Goodman down. And Mac showing off a little bit of that physique here to this crowd in Club Rush. Goodman trying to recover. Mack off the rope looking for something. Oh, but no, running into the knee of Goodman. And Goodman on the top rope looking for something. Goodman getting out of the way. Coming back in hot. Big snap, Mayor. Off of the opposite rope. Ooh, looking for the PK there, but missed. Ooh, Mack missing the clothesline. Both of these guys back and forth scouting each other pretty good. <laughs> Goodman with a crucifix. Rolling Mack around the ring. Not in the ropes, though. But still kicking out at two. Interesting uh, maneuver there from Goodman. Looking for something there. Oh, God, got caught in a big power slam from Mack. Hooking the leg, putting him down with authority. Only two. Goodman, not a small guy either to be throwing around like this. Oh, my God, and speaking of throwing around, big release German suplex. Mac not done yet, pulling him back. Up and over, big choke slam from Brandon Mack off of that Irish whip. Still only two. Nice maneuver from Brandon Mack right there. And he's going to follow up suit with a bunch of strikes, continuing to rain down this offense on Goodman as he plants him into the mat, into the cover. Leg hook, will that be enough? No. Goodman getting the shoulder up. Mack trying to stalk Goodman as he makes his way to his feet now. For a nice little neck breaker there, taking him down.
Back there, got Goodman. Ooh, Warrior wants him slamming his head into the turnbuckle. Throwing some strikes his way in. Goodman just being mauled right now by the big hurt. Big elbows raining down right on the chest of Gordon Goodman. Back in these fans here. And Club Rush hiked up off of the rope. Nice double axe handle. Using both of those ropes to gain speed and velocity there. Nicely done. And Mac just stomping away at Goodman. Stalking him. Mac, not a small guy by any means. And we continue to see his strength on full display here tonight. Mac might be one of, if not the strongest guy in Catch-22. Hell, maybe the whole performance center. Big belly to belly there. Still not enough to keep Goodman down for the three. Pretty resilient so far as Goodman's taking a lot of big hits here from Mac. Mac has just stayed on this guy the entire time though. Ooh, finally Goodman maybe trying to catch a break here as Matt crashed into the turnbuckle off of the ropes. Oh, but now he's going to eat a little neck breaker. Coming back at him there. Matt going for that cover. Every time Goodman kicks out, wearing down on his stamina, wearing down on his core. Got to try to get some offense in this one. Anytime he seems to, Matt just comes right back at him twice as hard. Just dropping him into the mat. Nothing pretty about it. Just dumping Goodman down. Mac just showing his strength here tonight. Throwing Goodman around like he was about half his size. Oh, but speaking of that, Goodman with a beautiful counter there. German suplex rocking Mac for a second. Takes him down with a clothesline. Another one. Another one hit the hat trick of clotheslines. And now Goodman looking to shift gears here and go after that knee. Going back to that early strategy we saw with that chop block that opened the matchup. Going after the legs and the knee of Brandon Matt. Oh, and look at this. Heel hook applied. Center of the ring, nowhere for Matt to go. He's going to have to brute force his way out of this one. Ooh, just a stiff kick right to the head of Goodman. That's one way to get out of it. We're looking for a bear hug there, but ooh, nice rustling maneuvers from Goodman. Fighting out of that bear hug there with a nice little hip toss. Now Chuck and Mac to the outside of the ring. Goodman, maybe they'll use some of that trial by flight experience over the top on a nice barrel roll. Tope connecting, and Goodman trying to quieten this crowd down. Maybe he's having a little trouble focusing out here. Goodman doesn't seem too enthusiastic about this crowd. He is raining down stomps and kicks all over Mac right now. And Goodman got the complete advantage. Oh, just throwing Mac shoulder first into those steps. Goodman using the outside of the ring to his advantage, but we are at a six count now. Goodman realizing it, throwing Matt back in the ring. And now going up top. Goodman looking to fly. High rent district, he pays the bills though. Big leg drop. Coming down right on the neck of Brandon Mack. Will that be enough to keep him down? But no. Goodman getting agitated. And Matt kicked out of that big leg drop from the top rope. But he's got to stay on him. He can't waste any time. He can't let a guy like Brandon Mack recover. Ooh, look at this. Taking him down with authority in the center of the ring. Trying to rip that arm away for an arm bar here. When Mack rolling his way through. White hands. And just once again brute forcing his way out of a submission maneuver. Oh, Gordon, Gordon went for that leg again. Oh, but this time paid the price. And ate a big drop kick for its troubles. Goodman trying to recover. Mack off the rug, looking for something big. Oh, no, comes in. Gets caught with a neck breaker. Doesn't take him down, though. Goodman not done yet. Slamming Mack down. Now maybe he's looking to shift his, his focus to that arm there. But Mack using the opposite arm to hit him with some strikes. 
And some more in the corner. And Matt just assaulting Goodman with strikes. Back in the driver's seat in this one is Brandon Mack. Ooh, slamming him right into the turnbuckle. Putting him up top, looking for something here. Oh, look at this. Once again, the strength of the big hurdle. Full display. Throwing Goodman all the way down to the center of the ring. And he's not done with them yet. Shot to the gut. What in the world is this? Boom, boom, pump handle. Olympic slam for Brandon Mack. That could be it. But no, Gordon getting the shoulder up. And Matt can't believe that wasn't it. Trying to think of what to do next. Oh, but Goodman tripping Mack up. Playing a little possum there. And he's right back on the legs. Right back on the heel of Brandon Mack. And Mack is in the ropes. Mack has got the ropes. Gordon ignoring the official, but it doesn't matter anyway. Mack once again striking his way out of that submission maneuver. Gordon was ignoring the official's rope break call there. Lucky he didn't get himself disqualified, but Mack just fought his way out of it anyway. And now we both men coming back in. Nice arm drag from Goodman on the outside here. Oh no, Goodman. What the hell is he looking for here? He's got Mack up for a power bomb. Oh, on the outside, on the edge of the rampway. And Goodman going back in the ring. Gonna try to get a count out victory. Off of a huge power bomb on the outside here at the ramp. Maria trying to check and see if Mac is okay. He is getting up. We are at a count of five. Goodman not going to get that count out victory. Mac making his way back to the ring, trying to recover. Even Gordon can't believe it. Oh, what a big shoulder block. Oh, but Gordon right back up. And another one. But that one will keep him down. With big boot right across the face. Mackett took a lot of punishment from that power bomb on the outside. Ooh, throwing him into the ropes, coming back off. Oh, but reversing it into a clothesline. Mack is still dialed in in this one. He's taking a little bit of damage. But he is still in the driver's seat as of right now, but that could all change very quickly. Shot to the gut there. Ooh, big left hand from Goodman. And Mack wants another one. And he gives him one. And he wants another one. Brandon Mack defying the odds, telling Gordon Goodman to hit him even harder as he continues lacing him with these right hands. And Mack just throwing him off like they're nothing. Who went for one of his own, but got caught with a big one right there. And the caught Gordon's. And now both men just exchanging strikes back and forth, reversing each other's attempts. And they're going to brawl. Big hockey fight. Who's going to win it? Both guys not going down, but Goodman maybe getting the better of Mack right there. Mack being absolutely rocked with strikes right now. Goodman on top of him, but Mack throws him off with one of his own. And a big spine buster. Goodman had to be about nine feet in the air and emphatically with the cover, Brandon Mack is the victor. A great contest between these two, but Mack just a little more resilient at the end of the day and a humongous spine buster. Picks him up his first victory here in Club Rush. And ladies and gentlemen, just a little earlier, it was announced next week on Rush in our main event, it is going to be Sebastian Saint taking on Florida man Ricky Carson as he defends his Rush Breakout Championship. What a main event that is going to be next week, folks. But speaking of main events, let's dial it in for tonight. Your main event is a number one contenders match for the Rush Championship! What an opportunity this is right here. We're going to be having two number one contenders matches, this being one of them. The winner of those two number one contenders matches will meet one-on-one -on -one at our next live spectacular for the Red Brand Rush here for the Rush Heavyweight Championship. Representing the left hand pad, Fancy Caragoya!
And you want to talk about someone who is definitely no stranger to big moments and big opportunities. It is none other than Vandy Kiragaya. They've already been on the main roster once. They were a part of the Hunter Raj with Yuri Huntron and Amon Drake in the earlier parts of season one of SWW. You know, they have got to be hungry to earn their way back to the main roster. And this is definitely the way to do so. A humongous opportunity at the Rush Heavyweight Championship. And one of these two men is going to be in that match. Who is it going to be? Is it going to be Mandy Kiragaya here? Or is it going to be the Icon King, Tuan Montana? Big implications for the Red Brain here in this match. A man who has been almost unstoppable here in Rush. Only having one loss, one blemish on his record. And that was in the Starlight Sweet 16 tournament. This man right here, the Icon King, Tuan Montana. And his opponent, representing Chapter 22, the Icon King, Tuan Montana. You want to talk about someone who bleeds charisma. It is none other than the Icon King, Tuan Montana. And after his loss and exit in the Starlight Sweet 16 tournament, this is a huge opportunity for him. You've got to be thinking, if you're Tuan Montana, you have to win this match. You have to, to get this spot, this opportunity. Because when could something like this come knocking again? He had a great showing in the Starlight Sweet 16, but could not make it through a matchup with Kareem Hall. His big maneuver, his signature submission hold, the Royal Decree. He got rolled up by Kareem Hall as Kareem advanced to the semifinals and ended up winning the entire tournament. Very excited to see how that plays out. Kareem officially the first graduate of the Performance Center here in our program that we put up for the Coalition Network, building the future of tomorrow with the stars you're seeing here on Rush. And these two guys are going to absolutely bring it here tonight in the main event. For, like I said, a, a humongous opportunity for being the face of the brand. The Rush champion. Kiragai with a big clothesline there. And the striking of Vandy Kiragai going to be on full display here tonight. As we've seen from him before, big headbutt. Dropping it right on Twan Montana. Fans here tonight, I believe, are going to be pulling for Tuan Montana. We've seen nothing but love and support from him. I always talk about guys with egos. Tuan Montana definitely has one. Oh, what? He's definitely got a reason to have one. It's because of moves like that right there. Big spear from out of nowhere taking Vandy down, but still too early in the matchup to pick up a victory. Fans have seemed to be behind a lot more of our brash superstars here on Rush. And Tuan Montana definitely is one of the guys leading that pact. He oozes coolness, if you will. But he's all about backing up his words with action inside of the ring. We have saw that in every one of his matches so far. Both of these guys fighting each other off. And looking to trade blows here early, trying to test one another. And who will drop first? This is not just physical, this is psychological. Who can win? Ooh, an early exchange like this sometimes sets the tone for the matchup. Strong going low, kicking at the legs of Vandy. Very smart there, trying to take out the legs and the kicks from Vandy Kiragaya. Pulling him back into a power slam. Beautifully executed, beautifully done. Absolutely textbook from Tom Montana, but just two. A student of the game. Definitely under the tutelage of someone like Trey Mercer. While Montana, one of the future breakout stars here in the red brand for sure. But can he get the job done here tonight? Big announcement coming for our next live spectacular coming soon. 
Make sure you keep it dialed in here. And of course, thank you guys for tuning in to Rush as always. Your support means everything to us. We see it, we hear you, we love you. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure to hit that like button if you haven't already. It truly helps us out here at the Coalition Network. Continue to spread our content to even more new eyes as we continue to rush on here. No pun intended. In our main event. Big right hand from Vandy. And that is one thing I don't think Twan is going to be able to match with his Vandy striking abilities. He's just kind of dissecting Twan right now. Looking to really work over every part of his body. He was really working on his arms there momentarily. Look at this. Nice little sharpshooter from Twan Montana. But Vandy right near the ropes. And rolling through on Twan. Getting out of harm's way very quickly there. Oh, and back on that arm. Back on that arm is Vandy Kirigai. I was just talking about it moments ago. Trying to pull back the arm of Twan. But no. Fighting his way out viciously. You got to fight out of a maneuver like that. That is just something you don't want to be trapped in. And look at this. Twan. Maybe trying to work on the arms of Vandy as well. But look at this. The technical prowess of a veteran like Vandy Kirigaya. And now we're gonna roll Twan up. He fell victim to a roll up in his last match, but no, not this time. Not yet at least. Well, Twan looking to fight fire with fire. Nice little roll up here. Shoulders down, good positioning on the roll up, but no. These guys absolutely testing one another here in the main event tonight. Oh no, Vandy back on that arm, back on that arm. Oh, and this time, this time, he, oh, he might have him where he wants him. The human anatomy, the arm is not meant to bend that way. And Twan having to get the hell out of there before he has to tap out. That is a brutal maneuver. Twan is not going to be able to take much more damage like that on his arms. You got to think too with his, his signature move in the world of Kree. You're not going to be able to utilize as much strength if your arms get worn down like that. And look at Vandy continuing to try to wear down at Twan's arms. Bending him in every which way that they're not meant to bend. But Twan fighting back and fighting back hard. Look at this! Beautiful blue thunder bomb by Twan Montana! Oh, but no. Not enough to keep Vandy down for long. And you gotta think, this is probably the most in-ring experienced competitor that Twan has went against so far. Like I said before, Vandy making his debut in SWW earlier on in season one, got cut, and now he's back here in the Performance Center trying to prove that he deserves a spot on the main roster once again. And getting an opportunity at the Rush Championship, possibly winning it, what better way to show you are back and better than ever than just that. But he has got a tall task at hand here tonight. Twan trying to fight back, throwing a bunch of strikes, trying to wear Vandy down as much as possible, and slamming him right on his knee with a gut buster there. Twan well, got to be thinking he's got to wear Vandy down as much as humanly possible, especially in his core. Oh, and this time targeting his neck, dropping it right on the knee, into the cover, shoulders down, then hook the leg though. Well, like Vandy, prime positioning to kick out of that right there as he tries to recover on the ropes now. These fans in here in Club Rush behind the icon King Twan Montana looking for something big, nice clothesline, taking Vandy down to the outside of the ring, and Twan following suit. Twan not shy to use his environment to the advantage. Is he going to do it here tonight? Trying to, but Vandy reversing that Irish whip is sending Twan crashing into the railing. Well, Vandy's got something in mind of his own, a big knee as Twan was draped across the barricade. And now Vandy Kirigaya taunting this capacity crowd here in Club Rush. Twan well, trying to fight back though, after that vicious knee to the head. Looking to do just that. Bringing Vandy around to the ramp side. Just chucking him. We are at a five count though. Big shot. And a nice double axe handle there. Juan breaking the count. Bandy right back up. Ooh. 
Vaughn still on the offensive, but strikes, but no, Vandy. Trying to get things back in his favor here. Ooh -hoo! Just a swinging neck breaker on the outside there. That could have rocked Twan for sure. Oh, now what has Vandy got in mind? Taking Twan to the ramp. We've already seen someone get powerbombed on the ramp here tonight. What the hell is Vandy looking to do? Oh, my God. That could have hurt him almost as much as Twan. Just a crash landing suplex on the ramp. Vandy willing to sacrifice his own body to inflict damage upon Twan Montana. Just chucking him into the guardrail. Now Vandy breaking the count. What more can he do on the outside? He always looking for a clothesline. Twan moving out of the way. Oh, maybe he has something in mind of his own out here. Oh, just right on the knee. Twan not looking to hurt himself as well out here. Being a little smart about this, not being so reckless, not being so careless. Trying to get Vandy back into the ring. Oh, big elbow from Twan Montana. And another one. These guys have just been duking it out here on the outside. Oh, and right under the apron. We're at a seven count. Twan back in. Breaking the count once again. Oh, man, what is this? Twan on the apron looking for something as Vandy's coming to. Twan off of the ropes and a springboard drop kick to the outside. Now getting Vandy back in the ring. Twan going up top. Looking to put the exclamation point on this one. Oh, but no. Vandy moving out of the way. And capitalizing just in time. Vandy looking for something here. Telling Twan it's time to go to sleep. Oh, big elbow. Big rolling elbow. He could have knocked Twan out. Into the cover. Twan is down, but not out. Getting the shoulder up just in time. And Vandy's got to stay on him if he wants to keep the offense rolling here. Oh, Twan reverses that Irish whip, sending Vandy in the corner, and crashing into him on the clothesline. And he's not done yet. Big sliding lariat to the head of Vandy Karagaya. And these fans are up on their feet in support for their king, the Icon King, Twan Montana, and a big one sends Vandy down, crashing into the mat, right into the cover, leg is hooked, but no. Both of these guys taking each other to their absolute limits here tonight. Oh, and oh God, Twan sent over the top rope, trying to recover. Vandy could be looking to fly here. Off of the ropes, looking for the Tope Suicida. Oh, and getting nothing, nothing but the floor. Crashing down below as Twan moves right out of the way. And he's wasting no time trying to take advantage of that here. Vandy in a world of trouble right now. Twan, Anaconda Vice locked in the center of the ring. Vandy with nowhere to go. Twan maybe looking to make Vandy tap out. Ooh, but no, the knees to the back of the head. Vandy having to fight his way out of that one. And right back to the arm. Right back to the arm. That same army has been working this entire matchup. Twan pinned down with his arm being pulled back against him. Oh, but no. Fighting his way out with an elbow there. Both of these guys brutally fighting out of each other's submission holds. But you want to talk about a submission hold? The Royal Decree. If he turns it over, this could be it. It is locked in. And Vandy has to find a way out of this one. Oh, and he will by sheer strength. Has the arm damage affected Twan and his ability to lock in that Royal Decree. But Vandy is tired. He's gassed. Hell, both of these guys are after what they put each other through so far tonight here at our main event. And a main event worthy of that number one contendership for the Rush Championship. And back to it again. This time with the knee planted into the back. Is it going to be enough? Is it going to be enough to make Vandy tap out? Oh, and or Vandy rolling through this time. I don't know if Tuan can get that grip he usually does after all the damage to his arms. Vandy lining him up for something up in the corner. Oh, but no. Knee to the turnbuckle, crashing, and this time going all the way to the outside. Oh my God, Twan, Twan looking to fly off of the top. Tope Suicida from the Icon King. 
We have not seen that from Tuan Montana, but he's pulling out all the stops here tonight in this one. Getting Vandy back in the ring. Juan stalking him. Taking some time to recover, take a breath. And he's stalking Vandy for something here on this apron. What is he looking for? Vandy trying to recover. He might have no clue what's about to come at him. Tuan off of the ropes. Oh, but he missed. He missed. Vandy coming back at him. Looking for that double arm DDT we've seen before. And he spikes Tuan's head. Dead center of the ring. That could do it. Vandy Karagaya. No. Tuan just getting the shoulder up with everything in him. Staying alive in this one. And now Vandy trying to get into the head of Montana here. And now looking to continue to wear down at the stamina of Tuan. Matt wrestling him now. Continuing to try to work on him. Just slowly dissecting Tuan. Slowing this thing down, picking his shots. Right now is Vandy Kiragaya looking to utilize more of that striking as he just nails Tuan in the back of the head with those forearm shots. Into the cover. Will that be enough after the brutal strikes? No, Tuan still staying alive. Well, Vandy going to the top quickly now. Stalking Tuan as he's trying to get up to his feet. Trying to recover from those strikes. Vandy off the top. Big Meteora. Into the cover again. Leg is hooked. Two. And again, Tuan. Fighting. Feeding off of the energy of this crowd. Realizing that it is do or die here in this main event here tonight. Vandy again. Now using the ropes to try to choke Tuan out. Anything he can do to slow down, to inflict damage upon him. Wear down his stamina to, to wear out his will to compete here. And these head scissors are going to do just that. Juan, we rolling through. But has the damage been done? Oh, wait a minute. Royal Decree tripping Vandy up. Tripping him up. Turning him over. Can he keep the pressure applied though from the damage that was done to his arms? And he is rich and center of the ring, but still no, still no, not enough. Has the damage been done to Tuan Montana here? And again, Vandy continuing to try to wear out the oxygen of Tuan Montana to try to incapacitate him, but Tuan continuing to fight here. Big elbows trying to get out of this maneuver and he does. Tuan has got to figure out a way to piece this one together for the win, but Vandy seems to have him at every turn. Oh, and again, going for that knee, but eating the turnbuckle, and again, another Royal Decree trying to turn him over, but he's got a wrench back. He's got a wrench back, and he does. Can he hold it in long enough for Vandy to tap? Royal Decree stitched in, and he is pulling with all his might after all the damage to his arms in this match. Is it going to be enough? And it will. Tuan Montana victorious in an absolute war with Vandy Kiragaya. By submission, Tuan Montana. What a main event matchup and an opportunity absolutely earned by the Icon King, Tuan Montana. One of the number one contenders for the Rush Heavyweight Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight for Rush. We will see you next week for some main event championship action.